All right, so we are talking about website caching. Um, real quick, who knows what website caching is? What does that mean? Okay, a couple of you. Um, we were, this talk's gonna be a little bit higher level. Uh, we're sort of gearing it more towards the non-technical Drupal users, maybe the you know, site builders, project managers, those kinds of people. Um, but how many developers or maybe technical Drupal users do we have? Probably the same people that already raised their hand. I get it. All right. <laughs> all right. No, that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna fill in some little things here and there for you, for you to, to watch out for as well. So no worries. Let's go ahead and and, and move on. Uh, quick uh, agenda. Uh, so we are talking about uh, we're gonna do some introductions, of course. We're gonna get into what is caching. Uh, we'll go through a couple of sort of common scenarios with respect to website caching uh, to sort of illustrate the things that we're talking about. Uh, then we'll go through a couple of tips and tricks just to give you all some, some tools to, to use it later uh, and sort of wrap up with uh, sort of a quick recap of the things that, that we've covered. So, pass it over to Simon to introduce. So everyone, Simon, I'm working as a director of technology for Evolving Web. Um, so my background, been 15 years I've been doing Drupal stuff at various level, being to DrupalCon, building Drupal website. And um, I have uh, more focus on the back-end side of things. I used to call myself a headless Drupal specialist until I realized it might be uh, perceived in a wrong way. So I'm not calling myself a decoupled Drupal specialist. I would suggest it. Yeah, okay, and so I'm uh, Jesse. I am a solutions architect with Evolving Web. Um, I have about 10 years of, of various web development experience, uh, sort of as a full stack developer uh, across a couple of different platforms, uh, of course, including Drupal. Um, so, and of course, as a, as a, as a Drupal agency. Um, we, so who is Evolving Web? We are a full service digital agency. Um, we help a lot of our clients uh, bring their digital experience to life. Um, so setting meaningful stories of motion through digital uh, platforms designed for growth. Uh, we've been working with Drupal for about 15 plus years, maybe it's 16 or 17 now. Um, we're about 85-ish people uh, between designers, developers, content strategists, and a whole bunch more. Um, these are just a, a handful of, of clients that we've worked with over the years, um, you know, of, of, of various uh, uh, institutions. So, what is caching? I, I, I'm supposed to sit here for the recording, so I need to go over it. Yeah, so what is caching? So, essentially, for people that are wondering, so probably a little bit less than half that room, um, it's literally storing a copy of the result of a competition so that you don't need to redo that competition again. So, um, think about the uh, multiplication table you learned in your youth and you're not having to recompute those uh, small multiplication, you just uh, know them by heart. It's kind of the, the same thing. You're basically going to uh, store a file or a piece of data in a storage so that if the same request uh, needs to be executed again, you're gonna be able to serve the result right away uh, without uh, having to recompute it again. Um, so of course, it uh, gonna bring more performance to the overall system uh, because you're going to be able to reduce the amount of time you spent computing the result of a web page or um, styles or images. And uh, why it matters, uh, well, right now for web properties, performance is key at almost all levels. Of course, primarily for user experience, uh, uh, users are not going to be akin to keep navigating your website and they have to uh, wait a couple of seconds. Uh, each time they navigate uh, from one navigation point to the other, and uh, like correlated to that, then of course the SEO, the SEO, your overall SEO of your website is going to be uh, way better if the website answers uh, quickly. It's actually uh, one of the metrics that Google and other search engines are monitoring, and they use that to promote or demote uh, your website position in the search results. So it's actually key. So. Caching comes into like, th there's different type of caching when it comes to uh, using those techniques to speed up, um, to, to bring more efficiency to a, a web project. So the first layer we can talk about is the, what happens on the client side. So by that we mean the, the browser, so the actual Google Chrome or 
Mm, Firefox or Microsoft Edge? Yeah. Uh, something, something like that. So basically, and at that level, the browser is going to store some of the data so that when the navigation happens from page to page, there's no need to refetch those data again. So it's going to be like the, the different styles, the different fonts, the different uh, images, like for example, the logo, stuff that are like on all the pages. So the first access to a page is going to be a little bit slower, slower but then all the subsequent navigation steps are going to be um, faster because the data is just uh, local to the user computer. Then one step further, there's everything that happens at the network level. So basically between the user and the server that hosts, for example, your Drupal site. Um, and so at that level, it's the same thing. So instead of being actually stored on the, the, the local computer, it's stored somewhere on the network. So why is that interesting? Well, first, means that if there is cached data at that level, the request that wants that data back is not going to need to hit your hosting infrastructure that hosts the website. So it's going to be quicker, and you're going to save on the, like, the, the com computational need that that infrastructure uh, requires. And on top of that, uh, one type of those network level caches that are called CDN are actually like multiple copies of your content that I store virtually everywhere on the planet. So for any user, instead of their request uh, having to travel all the globe to the actual location where your website hosted, the content is going to be served much more closer to their geo ge geographical location, so it's going to be uh, faster. That's what's happened on the client side and on the network side. Uh, but there's also a type of caching that happens on the server, so inside the Drupal application itself. Um, and then it's, uh, it's in, in case um, it, it can't, it, it, it's not possible to cache that on the client side, on the network uh, layer, uh, then the application that is hosted on the server that runs there uh, is going to be able to cache maybe partially the results of some computations so that can be reused uh, much faster. So typically what that means, um, I'm going to just skip that, uh, great animation that was supposed to go over my discourse, but you got the idea. That means basically you can think of it as like two different kinds of caching. The one that are external to your uh, Drupal project and the one that are internal to your uh, um, Drupal project. The external one are interesting because as I said, you're basically moving the storage and the competition lead away from your infrastructure and you can serve that content much faster and closer to the user. Uh, it, it comes with a, it comes with a, um, like a, a drawback, which is it's only, it's only capable of caching full, like full pages of content or the assets that are uh, linked to those pages, so images, style sheets, but it's not going to be able to be really efficient if the pages uh, like changes, they need to be the full pages. And then when it comes to uh, more dynamic content, then you have the internal side of things, which is basically, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it can be completely customized. I mean, the developer that build the website is going to be able to leverage the cache in the way they want. So they're going to be able to cache things that can be reused for a longer period of time and recompute the things that change uh, all the time. But obviously that means that the requests are going to hit uh, the, the infrastructure. So if there's something you, you want to remind, it's like basically caches break down between uh, what's external to the website and that's what internal to the website of the Drupal instance. And I'm going to switch over to Jason. All right, so I mentioned we wanted to actually walk through a couple of scenarios because this is all can get into some kind of technical stuff. So it's helpful to sort of break down what this actually means when you're looking at a website. Um, so let's start with what is basically a simple static page. This is the Drupal.org homepage as of just a couple days ago. Um, and it's basically, there's nothing really dynamic happening on this page right now. It's just a static page with a bunch of content um, nothing interactive. Everybody is seeing this same page. If you all go to this website uh, today, you would see this same page. Uh, and this is kind of the best case scenario. Like Simone was saying, we can, we can cache this in, in a very uh, external way from Drupal. Um, 
So it's sort of the most external way, actually, where we can really leverage the caching the most in, the, in, such, in, in such a way that it basically avoids Drupal completely uh, in most cases. Um, and so because of that, it might be the simplest cache, but it's also maybe a little bit more difficult to control. Uh, we don't have as much control over it. There is ways that it can, can be controlled, but it's just not quite as easy. Um, but uh, um, it, because of that, again, it's probably the most uh, performant uh, to, to, to cache these pages. Uh, so, zooming in on this page a little bit more, let's sort of pick it apart a little bit because there's a bunch of things on here that are cached at different levels. Um, we have something like maybe the, the font files on the site. So, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Drupal's using Ubuntu. Uh, so, that's a, not a common font. Uh, it's, you know, it's not part of everybody's operating system. It, your computer, when you visit the site, is going to have to download that from an external location. Uh, and you know, it, we don't want to download that again when you go to the next page. Maybe you go into the uh, Why Drupal page. Why do we want to download that font again? And so this is where browser caching comes in. Uh, the browser has that ability to hold on to that, those font files that's going to tell uh, your browser how to render that font. Um, so there's no need to re-download it again. It's, uh, it's just going to get it straight from the browser. We have a whole bunch of images too. Those are the same, like the, 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 uh, the icon in the, in, in the navigation bar is the same across every single page um, for the most part. So we don't need to download that when you go to other pages. We also have uh, another image there that is, uh, the, you know, is just on the home page. Well, that's not gonna be cached for other inner pages uh, by the browser, but it is gonna be cached by some of those other layers like the CDN. Uh, where maybe you can get that image from a much closer location than you know having to go uh, much f further geographically uh, to, to get that. There's also some videos. Uh, you can sort of see the video controls there. So maybe those also could be something that's, that's cached. Videos might be a bit of a different subject, but the same ideas apply. We can bring them closer to a user, do some things to make that happen faster for those users. Additionally, maybe more difficult to see, but like, you know, the page is obviously styled in a very certain way. It's not just a, a white background. Uh, so there's some style sheets happening. There's some JavaScript probably happening. Um, and so those files are all things that we would otherwise have to deliver to a user every single time if there is no caching involved. So this is where caching is really helpful to make that uh, operate a lot faster and a lot smoother. There's also a bunch of code that gets generated behind the scenes, and this is what we're sort of talking about when, when we mean like caching a whole page. It's all this code that was generated when you visited that website. Um, Drupal did a whole bunch of work to calculate all that, uh, figure out what to display, um, and we don't need to do that every single time, again, because it's just uh, everybody seeing that same page. So why bother spending a bunch of time um, that is gonna make the page load slower? Just want to talk briefly about what is a CDN. We've mentioned that a couple times, and we've kind of alluded to it, but just to go a little bit deeper into that. Um, so we're here uh, in Lille, uh, and you might be visiting a website that's hosted maybe all the way in, in, in North America somewhere. Uh, that might take time to actually get over there. Surprisingly, the speed of light isn't that fast when it comes to a, a website. Um, so we want to bring those files closer to the user. Uh, but Doing that ourselves as developers or as agencies or as you know, uh, content uh, editors is kind of complex. So we bring in a, a content delivery network that's gonna handle a lot of that for us. Um, it, but it mainly only supports things like the images and all those other supporting files that we looked at, as well as that, that full page output, which you could imagine there's a scenario where a user never actually goes back to the, the web server, wherever it may be, uh, and they just get everything from a CDM, which is just, you know, a couple of kilometers away for, uh, if in, in some cases. So that's kind of the principle of a CDN, is just to bring things closer to the user uh, so that things uh, uh, work a lot faster. Uh, and that CDN sort of can uh, work sort of on the user's behalf to retrieve all those files from the original server, hold on to them closer, and deliver them to, to the user in the end. And that sort of takes us on to the more complex example. So I'll send that back to Simone. Yeah, so uh, Jesse, as Jesse said, when the, the page is mostly static, I mean, entirely static, the same content getting served to all users, it's pretty simple because you can cache that entirely and then serve it like from the server cache or the CDN or even for the brother cache if you know that it's not going to change uh, for a while. Um, but what happens if 
we have something dynamic. For example, we have elements of personalization or it's an e-commerce website and the prices are dynamic and computed by depending on the currency you selected or the geographical location you're in. Or like most simply, if you're using a search feature, obviously the search result page is going to be unique and not really cacheable. Um, in, that case, um, in that case, for example, if we're logged in, then it's the same web, web page, but the exception of that little avatar that is displayed on the top right corner. So in that case, we, if we take a closer look at the page, I mean, most of the elements are not um, going to change from page to page. Like the navigation is still going to be the same for everyone. That header here that, 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 that provides another level of navigation is still going to be the same. The images are also going to remain the same, but that very specific avatar is going to be different. So if we're looking at the page, Drupal is basically able to kind of poke a hole uh, in a page. And instead of caching the whole page globally, Drupal is going to be able to identify which blocks, which elements, which components of the page can actually be cached for a long time, just be reused, and which one are going to be dynamically generated for every request, and then like reassemble the page from the cached element and the one that needs to be recomputed every time uh, in a like way much more uh, in a way much more efficient way than if the whole web web page would have been uh, completely uh, recomputed. Of course, in that scenario of having elements of customization that are introduced, we're going to be forced to leverage the, the internal cache Drupal, and we're not going to be able to leverage like CDNs or broader cache for the page output itself, because at that level, it needs to be different for, uh, for every uh, users. So that said, we're going to switch to, uh, we're gonna have a tips and tricks uh, sec section uh, when it comes to caching. All right, so a couple of things uh, that are helpful to know when you're dealing with website caching. Uh, there's a couple of ways that we can sort of like work around it basically. Uh, and uh, the first way is just through what we often call a hard refresh. Um, so there's a few different ways to do that, but basically it's just, it's a way to tell your browser to ignore its own cache and go directly back to the network, to the server, to wherever it needs to go to get those files all over again. Um, so you can either do that through one of these methods depending on your operating system. Uh, mobile browsers may have like a in private or incognito mode, kind of does the same thing. Uh, it'll, it'll help you to, to um, not use that cache. Uh, and yeah, so that'll really help to get around that just by hitting that, you know, on a, if you're using a Mac, it's that uh, Command R on uh, Windows, Control Shift R. Um, for those of you using Linux, uh, I did actually update this earlier, but I guess it's still stuck in the cache, so I haven't updated it. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow to see that one. Uh, but uh, that's you know, the, the first way that you can really try to get around a cache. The next thing you can do is using a query string uh, parameter, which is basically this ugly thing at the end of the URL. A lot of you have probably seen those when you're sharing URLs around. Um, that string, for the most part, tells a web server or something along the line, like the CDN, that this is gonna be a unique resource uh, that we're requesting. Uh, and so it's sort of a way to, to, to tell the server to vary that resource but that the important thing is that it's telling everything else in between that it's unique. And so that tells the CDN, for example, not to cache that resource. So you can use that for the page. You can also use that for an image, like I have the, the logo there. If an image is sort of showing you the old version and you wanna see, okay, is it actually the real version? Um, this isn't gonna fix it for everybody though, it's just for, for your computer again. So there's still sort of an underlying question of why are we seeing the old image that maybe needs to be, uh, to be sorted out if this is something that's happening commonly. All right, and then the last stage, if you clear the cache locally, or you're, interested, you're int instructed all your user via Twitter to all clear the cache, uh, it didn't work, um, or you like use that techniques, or you flush the CDN cache via their UI and it's still not working, then the last result measures obviously to try to clear the Drupal cache itself. So two, two ways of doing that, that most of developers already know, uh, for non-technical users that if you don't know, there's uh, an actual button in the admin um, UI of Drupal that allows to do that, the, the equivalent trash command. Uh, that is here. Um, so obviously, if 
What I want to say for, for that, again, it's, it's obviously a debugging method. You, you can't really rely on that on a day-to-day -day operation basis because what's that, what, what, what's that is actually going to do is that it's going to flush the entire uh, cache. So meaning if you're trying to say, oh, that's, I have that, for that, that single page that each time we're updating it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't get refreshed for the user or they need to wait a long time before seeing it. So I always need to clear the, the, the cache. So what happens here is like basically because you're clearing everything, you're virtually rendering your website super slow for all the web pages for, for, for a while, which on heavily uh, loaded website might actually cause uh, a complete breakdown. So just saying that we, we just saw three uh, different tips and to kind of assess if there's a caching issue at various uh, stage of the, at various layers of the infrastructure, but it shouldn't happen. As I, as I said uh, previously, Drupal is capable of, of like even managing very dynamic caching scenarios. If you have to result to that, that means you need to put your developers back at work because there's something they're not uh, doing correctly. So in order to kind of wrap that up, what we learned today, so basically walking away from, from that room, um, I want to remember that there's actually two different kinds of cache, the external ones that are very efficient because you're basically moving away from your infrastructure, uh, a lot of the uh, computational burden. Uh, they're universal, they're not specific to Drupal, they're basically based on the foundational HTTP layer of uh, the web, uh, but they're, uh, they're like all or nothing. So in some case, you need to resort to using the Drupal internal cache to achieve uh, great performances. Um, and Drupal is really good at that. Actually, the whole Drupal caching APIs are built around the semantics of HTTP, which means Drupal is natively compatible with any external caches, be it the, the browser cache or a CDN. And it also provides for the developers a powerful, fine-grained internal caching API that they can use for, as we said, like caching various components of the page, but also if there's a development like a, an integration to an external API or any kind of computational um, requirements, that, that, they, that same API can be leveraged for that, uh, eliminating the burden of having to actually handle uh, the cache. They can just cache and say, I want that to be cached for an hour or for a day or forever. And in terms of like the overall architecture, uh, we learned that performance and throughput of a website are really key and it's important to keep that in mind and to constantly optimize it. And then when you end up in a case where it's getting harder and harder and caching is not helping, maybe it's time to maybe rethink uh, the user stories or the UX to bring that down to a, a more simplicity so that it's easier to cache and maybe even more understandable for uh, the end users. So with that said, thank you for your attention.